In the first seven minutes on ABC 17 News at 6, we look into an unreleased report from the Missouri Health Department that shows how the effectiveness of masks has impacted the spread of COVID-19. And the Columbia Regional Airport held a ceremony today to celebrate the construction of a new terminal. We'll tell you how the impact of a major airline leaving the airport could impact future operations. And I'm tracking another day of mild temperatures. I'll let you know when we cool down when rain could move back into mid-Missouri. Coming up. ABC 17 News at 6 on KMIZ starts now. New at 6 tonight, emails uncovered between the governor's office and the Department of Health and Senior Services shows data regarding mask mandates did in fact slow the spread of the Delta variant. But state leaders are disputing some reports on it. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Deborah Kendrick. And I'm Lucas Geisler. The Missouri Independent uncovered the data analysis by the department through a sunshine request. ABC 17's Hannah Falcon joins us live in studio after digging through the released data. Hannah, the study compares Missouri counties with mask mandates to those without. Deb Lucas, the health department tells me this is not an official study, but this graph from the health department uncovered by the Missouri Independent Sunshine Request shows the transmission rates between counties that have mask mandates and counties that do not have a mask mandate. Now the orange line is counties without a mask mandate and the blue is counties with. The documenting COVID project regularly submits uh, sunshine requests to the Department of Health and Senior Services. Part of its ongoing work to review how states are handling the COVID pandemic. The Missouri Independent uncovered a study done by the Department of Health and Senior Services that was never shared with the public through a sunshine request. DHSS found that the Missouri counties with mask mandates had lower transmission and death rates than counties without. The health department tells me it does not have any official studies on mask mandate effectiveness. Attorney General Eric Schmidt has active lawsuits against all four areas with mask mandates. Schmidt's press secretary told me, quote, we will continue to fiercely litigate our lawsuits against mask mandates in Missouri. Further, this analysis is inaccurate, end quote. An hour ago, Governor Parson responded to the Missouri Independent article on Twitter, saying the information shared was misleading and lacked context. All right, Hannah Falcon, thank you. While we didn't reach record-breaking highs tonight, we still had a really nice day for Missouri in December. I loved it. ABC 17 Storm Track Chief Meteorologist Jessica Hafner is in the Weather Center tonight tracking our next system. And Jess, for those that want that colder weather that they expect in December, when can we expect it? We're going to have to wait until next week. We'll get okay. back into the 40s for highs. <laughs> so tomorrow Fine we're going to be that. ending the week on a really nice note. So if you like this spring-like weather, we are going to be back into the 60s again for one more day. And this evening, still really nice. We're in the mid-60s in Jefferson City right now. Live look at Riley. There we are, 65. We're going to continue staying mild for the next several hours. Under clear skies, though, we'll drop those temperatures down to about 46. We'll continue to be chilly for a couple hours tomorrow. But as temperatures start to pick up. We'll get up to the upper 60s once again with a lot of sunshine. However, the winds are going to be shifting to the north behind a cold front and that's eventually going to cool us down into Saturday, but it looks like we're going to stay rain free at least until early Sunday. Here's what the future track looks like out the door. We'll have a lot of sunshine. Winds are starting from the south, but a weak front slides through during the day, and that is what's going to keep us under 70 degrees for most of the area. Still a very nice day. If you want to get any holiday decorating done for tomorrow, it's our last day in the 60s over the weekend. We'll be starting out in the 30s once again on Saturday. So it's a chilly start at the farmer's market the afternoon, though. We should be getting back up to about 50, and it's going to be a dry day on Sunday. Sunday, we'll be tracking some more cloud cover in the morning and rain chances will pick up, especially after midnight going into Sunday morning. It doesn't look like we're going to see a lot of measurable rain with that, potentially up to about a quarter of an inch, but the pattern's starting to get a little bit more active next week. I'll be tracking a system that starts to move in by the middle of the week and that should cool things down even more. Here's what the weekend looks like around 53 for Saturday. Sunday, a warm front lifts through the area and that's why we'll see a few showers, but we'll also get a reward of temperatures back into the upper 50s. It does 
does not last long, though. We'll be watching for some cooler air moving in by Sunday night. We're dropping down to near freezing by Monday morning. We're staying in the 40s next week with another chance of some precipitation Tuesday into Wednesday. I'll be tracking that in my next forecast. All right, thanks, Jess. Today, people gathered at the Columbia Regional Airport to celebrate progress made on the new terminal by signing a beam that will be placed inside the new terminal. ABC 17's Erica McGuire attended the beam signing ceremony and learned what this new terminal will bring to mid-Missouri. Lucas, Deb, the new 52,000 square foot terminal is expected to be completed in late summer of 2022 and will bring opportunities for growth and additional flights and destinations. The new terminal at Columbia Regional Airport will have four gates and cost up to $35 million. Back in August of 2016, voters passed a 1% hotel tax increase to fund the improvements at COU. There's several different uh, combinations of funds that are being used for the terminal. The first package for the terminal is actually going to be $23 million, which includes several of those uh, funding mechanisms. Mike Parks, airport manager at Columbia Regional Airport, says the new terminal will have an impact on mid-Missouri. It represents all of us. It's, it will show a positive image when people arrive here in Columbia. Travelers of Columbia Regional say service out of the airport has been unreliable. So I think having the new terminal will encourage uh, more flights to come to Columbia and to be more consistent and reliable. This terminal uh, opens up the opportunity for more people. Um, accessibility improves with this terminal compared to the one that was built in the 60s. The new terminal will also bring more jobs to mid-Missouri. A restaurant in the terminal, that restaurant's going to serve both the secure side, so after you go through screening, also the public side, so if you want to come out to the airport and uh, have a meal. Now, Mike Park tells me that as far as the old terminal, there has not been a decision made, but there is potential of leasing it out. Reporting live in the newsroom, Erica McGuire, ABC 17 News. Okay, Erica, thank you. United Airlines' last flight out of Columbia Regional Airport will be on January 3rd of next year. The airport plans to speak to some other airlines about opportunities to fly into Columbia. And a, a motorcycle shop has put out a memorial on Providence Road where their friend Skylar Maddox died in a motorcycle crash on a Tuesday night. Gil Bain put out a green cross in honor of Maddox's favorite motorcycle color with a sprocket attached. The shop also put out a bright yellow sign that they alert drivers to watch out for motorcycles. According to the Missouri Highway Patrol, there were 116 deadly crashes involving a motorcycle in 2020. Ray Pierce, the program manager for the Missouri Motorcycle Safety Program, has been riding motorcycles for more than 30 years. He says drivers have to keep a full view of the road, especially when checking their blind spots. I've had cars literally attempt to change lanes on top of me because they're unaware that I'm there. Um, that the infamous head check, which seems to evade most people, is problematic. You gotta make sure that blind spot is clear. Pierce also says wearing the proper gear is always necessary. He says materials like jeans only last when traveling at 35 miles an hour. Still to come on ABC 17 News at 6, where the news comes first. University of Missouri officials have set the deadline on the federal vaccine mandate. We'll tell you who this impacts. And the magic tree was just lit at the village of Cherry Hill. You're looking live at it right now. And ABC 17 Storm Trek meteorologist John Ross is live with an explanation on why we're experiencing these abnormally warm temperatures. <laughs> 